Hello and welcome to Live at the Zoo here at our world of dinosaurs. I'm Aaron and I'm joined by Aaron who looks after our dinosaurs here at Paradise Wildlife Park. So what we're going to be doing this morning is we're going to be taking you around and showing you the dinosaurs that Paradise is home to. But it's now a really exciting time for the park because we can officially reopen on April the 12th following lockdown. As long as the roadmap goes to according to plan, fingers crossed it does. But uh, in the meantime, please make sure you buy your tickets to come back to the zoo for when it does reopen because they're selling fast already. And if you want to see what we're up to generally, then make sure you check out uh, 123 on the BBC iPlayer to follow what me and my brothers have been up to over the last year, not only here at the zoo, but also over in Africa as well. So, Aaron, you ready to go for a wander and show everyone the dinosaurs? Of course, let's go. Awesome. All right, follow us this way. Now, obviously, right now, it's the middle of the day. But what we're going to be doing next week is actually a live dinos after dark as well. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that across our park's social media. So Aaron, how many dinosaurs is Paradise actually home to? Well, there are approximately up to 30 life-size dinosaurs in here. But there's also other creatures that lived in the Mesozoic era, such as the flying pterosaurs and also the sea living creatures, the plesiosaurs. They're not technically dinosaurs, but they lived at the same time here. So they're commonly mistaken as dinosaurs, but they're close relatives. So there's 30 of them in here, ranging from the famous T-Rex and Triceratops to ones that you may not know of, such as the Dilophosaurus and possibly even the more famous Spinosaurus as well. So there's plenty in here and we keep them as well fed as we can and just hope they don't eat us in return. Of course, and uh, all of our dinosaurs are animatronic, so these guys, they roar, they breathe, they move, even their eyes open and close, some of them even glow in the dark as well. So uh, yeah, they're pretty awesome, especially as you get close to them and they really come to life. So Aaron, what are the first dinosaurs we have on a world of dinosaurs tour. Well, technically, Aaron, these are not dinosaurs. Oh, these are do. pterosaurs, but they are very, very closely related. And many, many of them are mistaken as flying dinosaurs. These are pteranodons. Amazingly, you don't spell that with a T, you spell it with a P. Now, pteranodons are, are some of the most famous of the flying reptiles, but you can get many species. And they range from very small ones to this size, to ranging to huge flying ones, such as Hatsigopteryx, with a skull that is three meters long. You can imagine seeing that flying over, it's as large as a small aircraft. So Absolutely. We've got the flying ones here, and then we've also got the one on the left side here as well. Also, a, fact, a small fact about them is you notice they don't have any teeth in them. They are completely toothless beaks, and that's because the name means winged and toothless. And amazingly, that is actually more efficient at catching fish than a mouthful of teeth. Huh? All the babies just there. Obviously, we wind our way through the world of dinosaurs. You can see all the plant life as well. We've got that wrapped up because obviously at the moment it's quite cold weather. And a lot of the plants that we have here are quite tropical as well. Hence why they're all wrapped up nice and warm. Being careful by the gardens team. So, as you can see just in front of us, we have our next dinosaur. And this one's a lot bigger than the ones we saw beforehand. Aaron, do you want to tell us a little bit about this one? This dinosaur is called Baryonyx. Now the name Baryonyx means heavy claw. It was first discovered here in England. So the so dinosaurs live all over the world. They don't just find them in America, they find them here in England. This dinosaur can get up to about 10 meters in length. So that's pretty large, not the biggest, but it's still pretty large. And he has over 110 teeth in that mouth. He's related to a group of dinosaurs known as the Spinosaurs. This includes the famous Spinosaurus, which we will see later on. And these are believed to be pescivores, fish eaters. So they would mostly spend more time in rivers and floodplains. And as you round the corner, already we've seen two really big predators. We're now going to see a giant herbivore. So Aaron, what dinosaur is this? Well, this, so this dinosaur is an armed lizard, Brachiosaurus. This dinosaur can approximately reach up to 13 meters in height, and that's just the height of straight upwards. And they weigh are in the range of 50 to possibly 70 tons. They're still deciding that yet. But amazingly how big this creature is, it's not the biggest. In fact, it doesn't even come close to the supersized giants. Such Which as, is? Such as you've got Supersaurus, Ultrasaurus, Argentinosaurus, and Patagotitan. Some of those can reach up to 100 tons and be approximately 110 feet in length. That's absolutely huge. It's hard to believe that an animal the size of that isn't even one of the biggest species on the planet. So I have a few comments coming in. Just if you could just pronounce a little bit bigger so uh, people can hear you as the dinosaurs are incredibly loud. What? So we've got a baby one just here. And then you can just 
can see, we're going to be circling back round to the dinosaurs that are on this side. You just see some of the big predators over here. And in the middle, we have some more static dinosaurs as well. And this is usually where our Rex Express goes past. Okay, so we've looked at a lot of land-based dinosaurs. We're now going to look at a more aquatic-based dinosaur. So, Aaron, what dinosaur do we have here? And well, where might people recognise it from in terms of local, le well, I say local legends, like native legends, particularly to Scotland? Well, here you have the creature known as the plesiosaur. Now, that name means mitnea reptile. When these were first found, they were believed to be dinosaurs, but when they took a closer look, they realised, oh, wait, these aren't quite dinosaurs. They're a bit different. So they were dubbed plesiosaurs, meaning near reptiles. These have lived virtually all over the world. You'll find them anywhere. Most commonly found in the southwest of England in Lyme Regis, which is where they were first found. And if anyone's native to Scotland, you might recognise this thing because it's believed to be the creature known as the Loch Ness Monster. If you can believe it. recognisable dinosaurs on the planet. Aaron, what can you tell us about this one? Well, this, of course, needs no introduction. It is, of course, the famous Triceratops. That name means three-horned face. I guess you can tell that by the horns on its face. And it is perhaps the most, one of the most iconic dinosaurs ever found. Its skull alone is about one-third the length of its entire body. It was about eight metres long and could possibly weigh up to eight to 12 tonnes, they estimate. It could run about 15 miles an hour. And of course, it's famously depicted as the creature that would take on a T-Rex if it dared. Yeah. Now we've looked at a lot of real life animals that did once upon a time exist. But we're now gonna look at one that is a bit more fictional. Now, those of you who've been watching the Jurassic World franchise, particularly the last one, may have seen some Well, again, that dinosaur that needs no introduction. This is the famous Indoraptor. And of course, that's not a real dinosaur. As we all know, it's not real. It was genetically made in a lab, but it is based on the Velociraptor. So it has Velociraptor speed and agility and intelligence, but it was given the size almost of a T-Rex. Whether this was how big they could have got, we don't actually know because they didn't tell us if it could grow any bigger, but it was programmed with insane intelligence and was programmed to follow orders. So it could be a soldier if you wanted that sort of thing. We didn't turn on you. Yeah, we've seen some pretty big dinosaurs so far. We're gonna downsize a little bit now and also again, go from an animal that was strictly a predator to something that focused a bit more on a delicacy, I guess, for, for dinosaurs based on the way that its mouth is shaped. One of the most odd looking dinosaurs that we have here at the park. Aaron, what species is this? Well, this, of course, is another famous dinosaur. This is an oviraptorid. Now, oviraptorid means egg thief. And that came from the fact that when it was first found in 1923, it was found upon a nest of eggs that they believed belonged to a different dinosaur. So they believe it was feeding on them. However, when we found the eggs again, we found they were baby oviraptors. So it wasn't a predator, it was a caring parent. But... Considering that we did find two unrelated embryos in an oviraptorid nest, it appeared they were egg thieves on some occasions. Not a very nice creature. <laughs> so we've gone from an animal that would focus on stealing eggs to an animal that focuses on actually eating other animals once it's fully developed. And as you can see, there's a bit of an attack going on here. Aaron, what's happening in this scenario? Well, we have two dinosaurs in this scene. One of the bottom of four legs is the famous Iguanodon. That means Iguana Tooth and was actually one of the first dinosaurs ever named back in 1820. So that's quite a long time ago. On its back, you'll notice, is the famous Velociraptor. Now, you know that from the famous film Jurassic Park. Velociraptors were mostly found in Mongolia, but raptors have been found all over the world. They were up to six feet long, about the size of a wolf, and they could hunt in packs. They had quite large brains for their body size, extremely powerful night vision, and they had very powerful grabbing claws. So as you can see, once it jumped on the back and stuck its claws into you, you weren't going to get away. So that's not catch up? Uh, no. <laughs> we try not to. Now, while Aaron was just talking there, you may have heard the sound of arguably the most famous dinosaur of them all. You can hear it again now. And as we round the corner, you should get a pretty good idea as to what it is if you haven't already guessed. It's 
especially with the Jeep in front, kind of recreating that famous scene from Jurassic Park. Aaron, is this what I think it is? Well, what do you think it is? Tyrannosaurus Rex. Well, you're yeah, absolutely right. Yes, this is in, this is the legendary king of the dinosaurs himself, Tyrannosaurus Rex, meaning Tyrant Lizard King. Does it need any more introduction than that? It's up to 12 meters long, six tons in weight, four meters tall, and it can bite with a force of 12,000 pounds of pressure. That's 10 times stronger than a lion. So uh, anything goes into that jaw, it's not gonna come out. He has up to 60 teeth in that mouth, and those teeth are designed to be broken and replaced. So once he loses the teeth, he'll just get a new one. Wish we could do that. Now, even though the T-Rex was the most famous of the dinosaurs, and even though it was a very big predator, it wasn't the scariest predator of them all. That belongs to the net, that title belongs to the next dinosaur we're gonna see. And if you've seen Jurassic World, or Jurassic Park 3, then you'll know that this actually killed and ate the T-Rex. So Aaron, what dinosaur do we have here? Well, of course, if, as Aaron just said, if you've seen the film Jurassic Park 3, this is Spinosaurus, meaning spiked lizard. This is believed to be the largest meat-eating dinosaur ever found with an overall length of 17 meters in length. That's four meters longer than a T-Rex. That's absolutely huge. It was also, as we said earlier, related to baryonyx. So like baryonyx, it too was a fish eater, but it would have eaten very, very large fish. But that doesn't mean it wouldn't have turned away from a dinosaur if it had to. Very, very powerful creature. So thank you everyone for tuning in right now. Don't forget to like and share and uh, definitely visit us when we can reopen on April 12th. Yeah, book your tickets now online. Um, it is pre-book only entry to the park when we do reopen. So the best way to go about that is to visit our website, which is www.pwpark.com. Now we're going from the biggest predator of them all to one of the most famous herbivores of them all. Aaron, what are these? Well, of course, looking at them, they're kind of obvious what they are. These are the famous Stegosaurus. And the most iconic feature of a Stegosaurus are, of course, those very large plates on their backs. It's long believed they were used to fend off predators, but when you look, that doesn't quite make sense. Well, first of all, they're in the wrong place. I mean, a meat eater's not the smartest, but if it bit the Stegosaurus on the side, it could easily avoid the plates. But if you want to attack a Stegosaurus, you've got to try to avoid its second line of defense. Those four very large spikes, known as a Thagomizer. And it was definitely used as a weapon for we have found unfortunate allosaurs who kind of got the point. So again, we're going to go from a herbivore to a big scary looking predator. And this one looks like a tiny T-Rex, basically. Well, this is Carnotaurus. That name means meat-eating bull for the spot horns on the top of its head. And this dinosaur was found in South America. He is a mid-sized theropod, but he does hold a certain record. He is actually the dinosaur with the smallest hands. If you notice those tiny little arms, they make even the arms of a T-Rex look big. His first actual appearance on screen was in the 2000 film Disney's Dinosaur. So he has been on TV before, long before he was in Jurassic World. Battle. So what's going on here? Well, these are also famous dinosaurs. These are known as the Pachycephalosaurs. Now, Pachycephalosaur means thick-headed lizard, and you can see from the very large domes on the top of their head, that can be up to 10 inches thick of solid bone. So I believe these two would have banged their heads together very, very hard, and evidence has been found from concussion marks found inside the skulls, showing that they did bang their heads very, very hard against each other. Yeah, now that's obviously a, a pretty unique feature to have, quite an armoured head. Oh yes. But what if you had an armoured body? That would probably be a little bit better, wouldn't it? Well, that's it. That's Speaking of armoured body, that's the dinosaur that has just that, really. Yep. Like, yes, like Aaron said, this is an ankylosaur. Now this is known as the tanks of the dinosaur world. That whole system you see on the back, that is armour, and that can be up to nearly 5 to 10 inches thick. So, you want to try and get through that armour, good luck, but if you come too close, then you've got that to contend with, and that is a tail club. 
and then cut us off and swing up up to 12 two tons of force. So if that hits you, well, there's not going to be probably much of you left. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to get waxed by one of them, that's for sure. Well, we have found evidence that they did whack T-Rexes with them because we have found T-Rex leg bones with fractures in them showing that these legs had been hit with some type of tremendous force. So they had been broken. Maybe not fully broken, but badly fractured. So badly injured. Yeah, that's quite true. So obviously there's different times that dinosaurs were around. So can you just break down the, the different era names? Yes. Well, how long ago they were? Yes, well, dinosaurs lived on Earth for 160 to 165 million years. That's from 225 to 65 million years ago. But new finds are actually pushing it back even further than that. These make up the zone known as the Mesozoic Era. But in that, we break it down into three genetic time periods. First is the famous Triassic, then comes the more famous Jurassic, and then finally the Cretaceous. Most of the dinosaurs we have here lived in the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. We don't quite have any Triassic dinosaurs. They're not that fun. The T-Rex, Triceratops, all live in the Cretaceous, but the Brachiosaurus and the Stegosaurs live in the Jurassic. So different di dinosaurs live at different times. What's more amazing is the timeline between Stegosaurus and T-Rex is longer than the time zone between us and T-Rex. Now, as Aaron was talking there, you might have just heard the sound of yet another incredibly famous dinosaur. We saw some smaller ones earlier, but Aaron, do you want to let everyone know exactly what is none other than another famous Velociraptor. And the Velociraptor again was famously seen in Jurassic Park. However, what you saw in Jurassic Park was not quite Velociraptor, for a Velociraptor is only the size of a turkey. What we saw in Jurassic Park was a creature called Deinonychus. Now Spielberg liked the size of Deinonychus, but what sounds better? Deinonychus, Velociraptor. I think we all know the answer. The Velociraptor sounded much, much better. So you've got Deinonychus sized raptors, but with Velociraptor's name. And that's why many people get confused when you tell them how small a Velociraptor actually is. Like this one here. And coming to our final dinosaur, this one's quite unique because this one would have actually, well, sprayed its prey, I believe. Well, that or is... Or you're going to me totally wrong here. I'm sorry to say, I'm afraid I'm going to have to prove you totally wrong there, Aaron. That's this, of thing course, the films have just put in there. Yes, this, of course, is Dilothosaurus. Now, this, of course, was seen in the film Jurassic Park, known to have spit, its, spit venom at its prey and has this frill. However, sorry to burst the bubble, that was all made up for the movie. Dilothosaurus does not spit venom, however, and does not have that frill, but it was definitely not something you'd want to run into. It was, very, it was a very powerful fast and had a powerful bite, so... Once it sunk its teeth into you, you weren't going to get away from it. And it lived in about the early Jurassic. So this is perhaps the earliest dinosaur we've got here. Oh, that's pretty cool. Awesome. Right, well, seeing the Dilophosaurus, that was actually our final animal of the tour, our final dinosaur of the tour. So I hope you guys have enjoyed learning everything from Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> All of the information, because, you know, he's incredible when it comes to his dinosaur knowledge. Um, don't forget to come and say hi to him when you do come back to the park. As I said, we open on April the 12th. Fingers crossed, as long as the roadmap goes well. Um, in the meantime, make sure you purchase your tickets to come back to the park through our website because it's pre-book only. So go to pwpark.com to get your tickets. As you can see, he's giving Aaron a bit of a spray. <laughs> um, and yeah, in the meantime, don't forget to check out One Zoo 3 on the BBC iPlayer and also keep up to date with everything that we're doing at the park over our social media. The next time we're going to see our dinosaurs is next week. We're going to be doing dinos after dark, so make sure you tune in for that. But in the meantime, stay home, stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.